Hello guys and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. In this video we're going to be looking at numeracy calculation questions that come up in the higher chemistry exam. So I'm going to switch to a screen record for the rest of this and talk you through how I would advise laying them out just to make them a little bit easier to follow and give you an idea of where to start because with these questions that's usually the hardest part is knowing where to actually start. So we'll get right into some examples and hopefully you find it helpful. There's my little dog sleeping. <laughs> So apologies if you hear some dog snoring in the background because it is that sleeping dog that you just saw in the video just before we switched to the screen record. So our first example, we've got the minimum concentration of ethane thiol in air that can be detected by humans is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 7 milligrams per centimetre cubed of air. Then it says calculate the minimum mass of ethane thiol that needs to be present in a room containing 43,900 litres of air in order for it to be detected. So what I always do is start by writing down numerical relationships that you're given. So it tells us that 2.7 times 10 to the minus 7 milligrams is in 1 centimetre cubed of air. So I'll write air and uh, ethane thiol just so I know what these numbers are related to. And then it wants the minimum mass of ethane thiol that needs to be present in a room containing 43,900 litres of air. So we want a mass of ethane thiol, which means I'm going to put a question mark underneath here because we're trying to find out a number on this side. And then we're given a volume of air. So again, I'm going to write that number underneath here, but I'm leaving a bit of a gap underneath and that's in litres so units are important here so what this shows us is that we can start scaling down and up on this side in order to then work out what the number is on this side so this is what we call direct proportion and um, so numeracy calculations are most easily done by using proportion so if we switch this around that means one centimetre cubed of air would need 2.7 times 10 to the minus 7 milligrams in it for it to be detected. But we want to find out how much we would need in this much air. So we need to make sure these units match. So we're going to change that into centimetres cubed. So in order to do that, we times that by a thousand. So that's adding on three more zeros. So then to go from one up to four, Four three nine zero 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 zero. We times by four three nine zero 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 zero. So we do the same on the other side. Times by the same number. Okay. So if we put that into our calculators, and this is where I wish I had a scientific calculator still, but I don't. So I'm going to be typing out a lot of zeros here. <laughs> so. 0.27 times 439000000. And that gives us 11.853 milligrams. So that's how much needs to be in the air for it to be detected. If we go on to the next example so it's recommended an adult female takes in 14.8 milligrams of iron per day 100 grams of a breakfast cereal contains 12 milligrams of iron calculate the percentage of recommended daily amount of iron provided for an adult female by a 30 gram serving okay so there's a lot of information there so i'm going to start pulling out the numerical relationships so the first one we were given is that 14.8 eight milligrams per day is what the female needs okay so that's their recommended daily allowance and then let's put rda there for recommended daily allowance and then it says that 100 grams of cereal contains 12 milligrams of iron so again i'll write cereal iron just so i know what the numbers are so it wants the us to calculate the percentage of the recommended daily allowance. So I'll put percentage question mark. Provided 
for an adult female by a 30 gram serving. So that number there, 30 grams, is a mass of cereal. So I'm going to write it underneath the cereal, but again, leaving a gap. So in order to work out the percent uh, of the recommended daily allowance, we're going to need to know how much iron is in that cereal. So if we scale to one gram, scaling down, we divide by 100. And then we scale up we do times by 30. So we do the exactly the exact same on the other side. We divide by 100 and then we times by 30. Now, usually I don't put this all in my calculator until the last line of working. So I would just keep the, write the working down and just put this in my calculator at the end. So if we do that, 12 divided by 100 times by 30, that gives us 3.6. So that means there's 3.6 milligrams of iron in 30 grams of the cereal, okay? We now need to work that out as a percentage of the recommended daily allowance. So a percentage is the mass you've got over the mass you need times by 100. So 3.6 over 14.8 times 100. Um, so a percentage is just a fraction out of 100. Um, that's where the per cent comes from, per 100. So 3.6 divided by 14.8 times 100. So that'd be 24.32%. Now you can round that up to 24. You can round it to 24.3. You can round it to whatever, how many decimal places you like, as long as your rounding is correct. So this one here is a bit of a trickier one. And there's a lot of information that we're given. So butanone is an important solvent. Butantool is required for its production. A chemist tested whether it would be possible to make money by producing butantool from propanol using a two-step process. And then it's got the two-step process there. The chemist managed to make 5.75 grams of butantool using 5.01 grams of propanol and 20.0 grams of methyl magnesium bromide. The cost of the chemicals used are shown below. Calculate the cost of chemicals needed to produce 100 grams of butan tool using this method. So we've got these numbers here and then these numbers here and we're trying to produce 100 grams of butan tool. So we know how much reactants they needed to make 5.75 grams of the butan tool, but we're trying to make 100 so if we take each reactant uh, and compare it with the amount of product it made, so 5.75 grams butantool was produced from 5.01 grams of propanol. And we're trying to make 100 grams of butantool, so we'll scale to, scale to 1 gram. So 5.01 over 5.75. And then we scale up to 100, so 5.01 over 5.75 times by 100. So if I put that into my calculator, get 5.01 divided by 5.75 times by 100 is 87.13 grams. So that's how much propanol we need. If we then work out the cost, for that so one kilogram of propanol is 22 pounds and 10 pence we're again needing to make sure that the units match so we need to convert that into grams so a thousand grams would be the 22 pound 10 pence we scale down to one gram to 22 pound 10 over a thousand and then scale up to the 87.13 grams. So 22.10 over a thousand times 87.13. So if we put that in our calculator, we get times 87.13, one pound 93 pence for this one with the rounding. So that's the cost of the propanol. Okay, we're then going to do the same thing for the methyl magnesium bromide. So I need to get a new page here, do some back and forths. So butan 
to all and I'm just going to abbreviate methyl magnesium bromide to MMB. So we made 5.75 grams of butan 2 all from the 20.0 grams of methyl magnesium bromide. Okay, this number here. So again, we're trying to make 100 grams of butan 2 all this time. So if we scale to 1 gram, 20.0 over 5.75 and then 20.0 over 5.75 times by 100. You can miss out that middle one gram line if you want, but I'm never confident enough to miss it out because I always think I'm going to make a mis silly mistake. So um, you can leave it out if you want, but it's at your own risk. Um, oh, I've not typed it under my calculator properly. So 20 divided by 5.75 times by 100. So that is 347.83 grams. So then if we go to the cost, so it's 25 kilos was 75 pounds. So again, we need to change into grams. So times that by a thousand. So we want 347.83 grams so we scale down to one gram 75 over two five zero 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 and then we scale up to the amount we're looking for which is 347.83 so put that in my calculator 75 divided by two five zero 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 times by three or 7.83 and that's one pound four pence okay so the total cost if we add it together equals one pound and four pence plus one pound 93 so all together that would be 1.04 plus 1.93 two pound 97 pence and there we go so yeah that was a much trickier one that one but like i said with these ones if you just start off by writing down a numerical relationship you're given and use proportion you should hopefully pick up at least one mark out of the ones that are offered and at least then you've made a start and then sometimes once you've made a start you can see where the calculation goes after that so I hope that was helpful. If it was, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Chemistry Academy and I'll see you again soon.